Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a prototype copy of Two Tank Common, a re-release of the game by 25th Century Games. Two Tank Common is an abstract strategy game of set collection with tiles being placed completely different every time that you play. The game can play from two to six players and plays in 30 minutes and the design is by Reiner Knizia. You will see the game set up here, but what you'll do is you're gonna randomly place these tiles out forming the Nile River. Players will start with their boats upstream and move downstream, choosing certain tiles that they want to take. Once the last tile of a specific set is removed from the river, it will then be scored. Whoever has the most of that set scores the most points, with whoever is second scoring half of those points. Players start with a specific amount of gold shown by these clips on the side of the box. When scoring sets, the winner will get to be able to donate a certain amount of their gold to the great King Tut's tomb, and the player who gets their wealth down to zero will gain favor with the new pharaoh and will be declared the next High Priest of Egypt. On a player's turn, they will decide to move forward any number of spaces without being able to move backwards. The tile that they decide to end on that they will take forming a part of a set. There are 80 tiles total forming the river. There are 3 sets that include 8 tiles each, 3 sets that include 6 tiles each, 3 sets that include 4 tiles each, and 3 sets that include 2 tiles each. For all these sets that I've mentioned, whenever all the tiles included in each of those sets are removed from the river, either from a player taking it for themselves, or when removing it from the river because everyone has passed it, then that set will be scored. Whoever has the most tiles of that set will score the most points. Each set scores with the winner being able to spend that amount of wealth equal to how many total tiles there are of that kind in the game. So these tiles here that there are only two will score two points for whoever has the most whenever the scoring is triggered. But with these sets of eight, the winner will score eight points. There is a one set of ten rings and these score differently. Each time you collect one of these, you will pay one gold. When the last one is taken from the river to be scored, whoever has the most will score an additional five points. The other ten tiles are the god idol tiles. There are five different kinds, two of each. These tiles don't score you points, but instead they will earn you favor with the gods, giving you bonus actions that will help you and your set collections. These bonuses might let you take tiles from the underworld, swap one of your own ring tiles for another one that is still in the river, remove a tile from the river, swap two tiles in the river, or even picking up a tile behind you or moving your boat back on the river. And it was going back to the player's turn. They will decide on what tile they would like to land on and take, and this tile will be resolved or kept in front of that player until ready to score. After doing this, the player will look to see if there are any trailing tiles behind all of the players. Simply find the boat furthest back upstream. If there are any tiles behind the player, then they will be placed on the underworld mat, one at a time, starting with the tile furthest back. When taking each one off, check to see if this tile is the last tile of that set. If so, then that set will be scored. You'll need to check to see who has the majority of that set. Whoever has the majority will score the points shown on the bottom of those tiles. Whoever has the second most tiles of that same set will score half of the number shown on the tile. After scoring, all tiles of that set from the players or from the underworld is deposited to the tomb of the King Tut and won't be used again in the game. If the tile isn't the last in its set, then simply place it on the underworld mat as these tiles are no longer part of the river. But some other tiles can still use them for bonus action like those god tiles. After a player goes through those steps, the next player goes, and so on. Just remember you're choosing what tiles that you want by only moving downstream on the river. So if you move past a tile that you want, you won't be able to take it. Well, except for those bonus actions. The game ends at the end of a turn when a player reaches zero on the wealth track. If there is a tie with two players being on zero, then whoever is the furthest upstream, which is the furthest from King Tut's tomb, is the winner. 
you will need to keep your eye out on what tiles might be scored first as it's a race to zero. The tile closest to the tomb is probably not a good choice to collect as someone will most likely get to zero before that set of tiles is scored. Well, unless you have an entirely different strategy in which you float down river faster than the other players to strategically grab tiles, the other players will most likely stay back to grab the upstream tiles, and you can take more time choosing which tiles that you want because other players won't be competing for the same ones, and you can change the game for all the other players as they might plan their strategy thinking players will be trying to stay back as best as they can. And I think this is a very valid strategy that could be used in the game. Remember that the tiles that there are more of will score more points, but more people might be going after them, and those tiles can be spread out amongst all the players. But if they are spread out more, you might only need half of them to have majority and still score the increased amount of points. Compare that to a set of two, where you will need majority and only score two points. You are investing less turns to score those points, but if you spent two turns to get those two tiles for the two points versus the four turns that you spent to have majority in the set of eight and scoring eight points, then you will be scoring more points in less turns. And that is really what the game is about. You are trying to score the most points in the least amount of turns that you can. So you also have this idea where you want to go after some tiles no one else might be going after. But you also want to go after tiles that everyone is going after, as it might actually help you. Again, going back to scoring the most points in the least amount of turns. You may be able to score half of those points being the player with the second most, and possibly only invested a turn or two to score them. When playing the game, your strategy is not going to be perfect because there are so many tiles out there to go after, and other players will take the ones that you want. All players are modifying their strategies all the time. And these five god tiles help you to reconnect with your plan, and if you messed up and want to change something, these tiles are your chance to do that. This includes having a chance at those tiles that were passed on that could benefit players and come back into play. The game just combines a perfect scenario of a game because it's fast to play, easy to teach, and full of strategy without being complicated, and includes depth within the gameplay. What else would you want in a game that has all of those things? I also heard that the components are going to be amazing, so amazing, you might want to place them in King Tut's tomb. Balance your position on the river, take interest in what other players are collecting, and make a plan for what you would like to collect while still being able to modify it as you play the game. Bring your family and friends together while honoring King Tut and placing as much wealth in his tomb in Tutankhamun by 25th century games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.